30 seconds. I want everybody to think about giving God a praise break. Because we all want to know what we're going to do. But every time you praise it, you get a little closer to your breakthrough. Every time you lift it,
missionaries, our visitors and friends. Our scripture comes from Philippians, the third chapter, a familiar passage. Yes, sir, Doc. Yes, sir. Thirteenth verse reads as follows. Brethren, yeah. I count not myself to have apprehended, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one, doctor. but this one thing I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. forgetting those things yeah. which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. Fourteenth verse says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'll get my text from the thirteenth verse, which says again, the B section, because there's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching to those things which are before me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to take for a moment my subject, I'm leaving it all behind. You, you want to tell somebody, I'm leaving it all behind. Before I start this morning, I, I just need a few individuals who can make up in their mind that I'm not leaving this service the same way I came. As, as we have recently embarked upon a new year, there are some things that just need to change. Yeah. There are some things that we did in 2020 that we still should not be doing in 2021. There are just some things that we just have to leave behind. Our motives should be better. Our conversation should be better. Our attitude should be better. Us as a whole should be striving to be better. But in being better, there are some things that we are going to have to let go out of our lives. My God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. All that other stuff is just a distraction. And it's the enemy's job to keep us confused because if he can, then we aren't focusing on what God has planned for us. It's a trick. And I tell you this morning, the enemy is trying to fool you. But our focus has to stay on God. 
And I don't know who this is for this morning, but if you are willing to walk away from some stuff, God said everything that you leave behind, I will fill every void that you have. We know sports have, most sports have four quarters. And it's not enough to start good. Yes, sir. Or to just lead at the half, but you've got to be ahead at the end of the game in order to be the winner. Christianity is like that too. It's not good enough to start out with a bang, but you've got to finish with one too. The Bible says the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one that endures until the end. Many times when we get saved, we're on fire for Christ, wanting to do everything we can, but soon disappear into the background, and some of us walk out the back door. Following Jesus is not a hobby, but it is a total commitment of your life to Christ. It is not always going to be easy, but we must stay focused and keep our eyes on the prize. We cannot afford to lose our focus. Look at Job. Lost everything he had. Look at Daniel. But they kept their eyes on the prize. What about Jacob? What about Moses? What about Joseph? They stayed focused because they knew that God would deliver them. In the end, that reward was in heaven. Staying focused sets us free from what other people think we should be doing and keeps us free to do what God wants us to do. Uh, just like Paul, we must remember that our goal is eternal life and heaven is our prize. When we stand before Jesus Christ, we want to hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. In Philippians, the third chapter and 12th verse, Paul is honest when he says, not as though I have already attained. Either we're already perfect. I'm not there yet. He keeps on. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I don't even really understand what's going on. But there's one thing I do that I'm forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Meaning that I'm not where I want to be. But if I keep on moving forward, I will get there. There's a song that the choir used to sing, I got to go through to get to where God wants me to be. Staying focused is important. You see, we have to understand that God's taken us through his spiritual pressing machine to make us look better than we look right now. Right now, you see a lump of coal, but, but he's making some diamonds out of us. He's taking our messed up lives and pressing us. How many know that God will put you through some pressure? My, my health is failing, that's some pressure. My, my job's not stable, pressure. My children not acting right, pressure. But after the pressure, I'll take the pressure, I'll, I'll take the ridicule, because after I get through going through my pressure, I'm going to look better than I ever looked before. Why, why, why do we need to stay focused? Because the enemy will try to keep you all focused. And I'm here to tell you today that it's not about you. Let me say that again. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. And the day we forget it's all about Jesus, we have a problem. Uh, the day the church forgets it's about Jesus, Miss Donaway crossed my name off the road. And the day the church forgets it's about Jesus, I don't want to be a member anymore. Because it's not about what I want. It's not about what you want. But it's all about what God 
moment. Because God has a plan for our lives. This plan is perfect. Reverend Davis always says the way is already made. All you have to do is walk it. God has made a way and has created us for such a purpose. We have some good work to do. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he also do. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my father. He's already laid it out. We are here on purpose. And we are free. Galatians 5 and 1 commands us to stand fast in the liberty. Wherewith Christ has made you free. And some of y'all young people are talking about these entanglements that Jada Pickett Smith was talking about. But the scripture says, and be not entangled. Again in the yoke of bondage. How many times have God gotten us out of one situation? Only for us to get ourselves back into another one. And we promise him down on our knees, Lord, if you get me out of this, I won't do it again. I know I'm not by myself, but I need to let you know that I'm going to my seat. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. But we cannot give up. Keep on the path. Keep your eyes on the prize because God has a reward for every person who keeps his commandments in their life. God's reward is abundant life. John 10, 10 said, I am come. That they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. As I'm going to my seat this morning, I need to leave you with this. Paul says in our text today, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But there's one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind me. Paul is telling us, no, I don't have it all together. No, I may not understand it all, but what I've come to understand is that there comes a time in my life when I'm going to have to leave some things behind. And I'm coming to an understanding now that where I'm trying to go in God, some people I have to leave behind. Y'all need to catch this this morning. I, I, you have to know and understand in this life where you're trying to go. Some people you got to leave behind. And when they call you and don't feel bad when they call you and say, why don't you call me no more? It's because if you're not helping me get to where God wants me to be, then you just hurting me. You have to call some people and say, so long. Bye-bye. I bid you adieu. Arriba Darchi. I'm trying to reach higher heights. I'm trying to go deeper in valleys. I'm trying to get out of the boat and walk on the water because there are some things that I need from God. And as long as we attach to foolishness, we can't get there. But God is getting ready to give somebody the release that they need. I, I told you it's only for a few people who can catch this this morning. That I'm not leaving this service the same way I came. And, and he's getting ready to give you that freedom that you want. So that when you come out of your pressing period. When you come out of the spiritual pressure machine won't even recognize you. They'll say he went in dirty, but God has cleaned him up. He went in sick, but when he came out, God healed him. Paul is saying, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I I I'm telling somebody, it's not time to play no more. 
if I can just get some real people. I, I just need a musician, y'all give me a second. If I can just get a few real people, then we can have some real church. Some people that don't need the musicians to jump and shout. Some people that don't need all the hype people and the singing and the, all the other stuff that we have to give God glory. But you can say, in my car, I'll give him praise. Without the musicians, I'll give him glory. When I get home, I'll give him honor. Just for about a few seconds, somebody ought to give him glory right there.
from death. But if you're in the church and you're not satisfied, we will welcome you with open arms and heal time. We're not a perfect church, but we're a loving church. We're a forgiving church. We're a praying church. This is a miracle church. We believe in the five-fold ministry. We will help empower you to take a spiritual stand in today's world. Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one? Bless you. Let us pray. Let us pray for the man of God. At the preaching of writing our word like that, don't see the devil is angry. At the preaching hope and deliverance, and the devil is angry. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we ask that you bless Tori. In God asks that you pour back into him what he poured back into us. Bless her now, God. Bless the man's servant. Protect them all the days of his life. No weapon formed against him shall come. Every tongue that rise up against him shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servant of God. Bless her now. In Jesus' name. And sometimes it's hard to sing the night from death. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shores, I know He'll lead me safely to the blessings He has prepared.
but you got to want it. You got to say what I'm saying again, sir. Got to want it. Thank you, Sister Felder, Evangelist Felder. You got to want it. It's here. It's harboring over your head. And God is telling uh, uh, the watchtower, your blessing is like a plane flying in the sky. And, 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 and the watchtower has told the plane it can't land because it's bad weather. When the bad weather passes, you can land. And, and so that plane is waiting to hear from the watchtower to say land. And God is saying, I'm just ready to release blessings in your life right now. I'm ready to let it land in your life, but you got to let some things go. I can't bless you in a, in a midst of mess. People of God, God wants to bless you. Tell yourself, God wants to bless me. I got to let T.D. Jake said some year or two ago, there's some people holding on to some pain and some hurt. That hurt me some 9, 10, 12, 20 years ago. And those people are going over their lives. And you're still harboring and holding on to that. Teddy Pendergrass sung a song. And I, and I hate to use it, but you got to let it go. People go out, let it go, let it go. Thank you. Listen, the staff of Hill Talk is feeding the people of God today. They gave you tickets. You have to have your tickets to get your plate. If you don't have a ticket, you won't be able to get a plate of food. So people of God, let us be mindful. If you don't have a ticket, get with Brother Johnny Frazier. He will get you one. Anybody need a ticket? Huh? You have yours? You can have mine. Give let us bless the food and give the benediction. Father God, we ask you that you bless the hands that prepare this food. Let it be nourished to our bodies. Today is a good day, God. A blessed day. We thank you for every minister. Reverend Lord Jackson, Stanley Laurie, Griffin Davis Jr., Stanley Osbury, those who are here, the missionaries, the trustees, the deacons, everyone that makes up this religious organization. We ask that you shower down your blessings. Miss Scott, God, we pray for her. She lost her baby this week. And so, God, she's been through a lot. She's had to bury her son, her grandson, and now her daughter. God, I'm asking that you would strengthen my auntie, Willa Mae Scott. Strengthen her family, God, her sons, Cortez and Trot. This is painful. Not just for them, but for the whole family and the body of Christ. No one welcomes death, even though we know that we have a point in time to leave here. No one welcomes death. God, I ask that you will comfort her and her bereaving her. And God, I ask that you will bless the homegrown service whenever they set the time. Hilltop is here for her, Lord. Her pastor, her brother is here for her. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest wood and abide, his for and forever. Amen. Trust these when you come.